Hi everyone! Today I'm continuing my Stretch Your Stamps December Daily Edition video series and this video is going to be part two of um, using digital stamps. In this video, I'll be focusing more on some techniques that you can do with your electronic cutting machine. Um, there are a couple that you can do without an electronic cutting machine, but for the most part, um, the cutting machine is definitely recommended. Whereas in part one, I focused on things that you could do without the cutting machine. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link down in the description box below. The first technique that I'm going to focus on for today is using your digital stamp, um, especially using a solid one to create um, like a tag shape or a booklet shape um, like I have here. So in this example, I'm going to use the holiday icon stamp set and I'm going to be using this house shape stamp. Now, first of all, I'm just dragging the file into my Microsoft Word document and then just using the crop function to get rid of all of the extra white space that's surrounding the stamp there. And then I'm going to adjust the size of the stamp to a bit under three inches by four inches because I want to be able to use um, my three by four cards in here as well as my three by four photos and for this to be able to slide into like a three by four pocket if um, I want to do that later on. Next, I'm just going to adjust the size of this Word document so that it's four inches by six inches um, just because I don't need to print that out on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And if you'd like to skip this step and use your um, electronic cutting machine to do this, um, that's fine too, but I am just going to print out this black shape on my printer on a four by six piece of cardstock. Once that's done, I'm just using my knife to cut around the shape of this image and I am using a cutting mat so that I'm not cutting directly on my work surface as well. You can use a ruler to make your cuts nice and straight, but I noticed on this uh, house stamp that it does have some slight imperfections in um, the lines of the shape to make it look kind of wonky. So I am just going to freehand this and it turns out just fine. And once I have this cut out, I have um, the original four by six piece of cardstock that has a house shape cut out of it. And then I have that house shape itself um, that's in the black there. And I am going to use both of these portions when I'm making my um, little house-shaped booklet. I've printed out some 3x4 photos, as well as some of the 3x4 journaling cards from the Paisley Press mini kit. And right now I'm just rearranging them in the order that they would appear if I were to flip through them um, in like a booklet. So I'm just keeping in mind the fact that the house shape is not symmetrical. So there's that chimney piece that is only on the right side of the house. So for the back of the front page of this booklet, for example, the page is going to flip and the house is going to have the chimney on the left side. So I need to put my photos um, facing backwards, some of them facing backwards and some of them facing frontwards, um, depending on where they fall in that booklet. And once I have all of the photos and the cards positioned facing the right way, um, I'm going to use that house stamp, that's the um, black shape that I have there, as a template to cut around all of my cards and my photos. Now for the journaling cards with things on them um, that are not just patterns and um, for the photos, I need to use the outside piece, um, the four by six card there, as a kind of a mask to see where the house is going to fall on my photos. And that's just to avoid um, cutting off anyone's ears or hands or any parts that I don't want to cut off. And I find using that outside mask really helps in positioning where I want the house shape to be cut. So I just use the mask and place it on my photo. And once I have the approximate spot where I want to cut the house shape out of, I place the house shape back into the mask, um, just lining it up where it's supposed to sit in the mask. And then I take off the mask portion and then I can cut around the photo exactly where I had intended to cut it. 
Now you can of course use an electronic cutting machine for this part as well. I just find with the electronic cutting machine it's a bit harder to predict where the house shape is going to cut on your photo. Um, so you almost have to have your subjects of your photo exactly centered um, whenever you're using the electronic cutting machine for this technique. So for simple shapes like this house shape, I really don't mind just using my scissors to fussy cut out all of my um, little tags or pages of the booklet. Here I've just finished cutting out all of my house shapes and you can see when I'm laying all of these pages out in a row um, what I mean when um, you want to make sure that the house is facing the right way. So you'll notice that the first page has the chimney on the left side and then the next page has it on the right side and then the left side again and then the right side. Um, so you definitely want to keep that in mind um, when you're making your booklet if it's an asymmetrical shape that you're using. Now you can definitely make this into a booklet and that was the original plan of um, that I had in mind here but when I had it laid out here um, I thought it would look really nice as an accordion fold instead and to attach these all together I'm going to use some gold ribbon from Michaels. Um, this is a very thin gold ribbon so um, I didn't think it would add too much bulk to um, this interactive portion and I'm just going to sandwich that ribbon in between the pairs of two photos or journaling cards that I have um, lined up here. So um, just using my Tombow Mono permanent adhesive tape runner to sandwich the house shapes together and sandwich the ribbon in between those two cards. So I'm just moving down the line and sticking these house shapes all together. And if you ever have an occasion where um, one of the house shapes doesn't perfectly match up with the one behind it, you can just trim off a bit of the extra overhanging parts um, like I did in this video. But for the most part, I'm not um, paying too much attention um, in regards to whether these um, house shapes line up perfectly or not. I think because the house is kind of wonky itself, I don't mind if um, there's a bit overhanging that I can see peeking out. So once I have everything attached together, I'm going to leave enough ribbon at the end so that it can wind around the house shape um, once and then tie together at the um, right side there. And I'm just going to decorate the front of this house um, with some of the embellishments from the Paisley Press mini kit. So I have that wreath chipboard from the kit and then I have a phrase sticker at the bottom there um, that says joy to the world. And for the very back page, I didn't like how that joy piece was um, on the pink swatches was um, kind of a bit higher than I would like on this journaling card. So I just decided to um, add the sticker, the puffy sticker that says love and gratitude. So it says joy, love and gratitude. And I think that looks really cute on this page. And as I had mentioned before, um, this house shape booklet is small enough that it could go in a 3x4 pocket um, if you wanted to include it on a pocket page, or alternately you could stick it on a base page like I have um, displayed here, or you could stick it into um, like an envelope of some sort and that would be great as well. The next technique that I'm going to be sharing today is to use your stamps to make kind of like faux acrylic pieces. The way that I do this is, uh, this has to be done using an electronic cutting machine, unfortunately, unless you have mad cutting skills with your scissors. But the way that I do this is by laminating a piece of cardstock first and then running it through my electronic cutting machine. So in this example here, I have my gold foil cardstock from Michaels and I had laminated that just with some medium weight laminate pockets and the lamination gives the cardstock a bit more stability as well as some thickness and if you're holding just a small piece in your hand it kind of almost resembles a really thin acrylic piece. One thing to keep in mind is that cutting through laminate like this will dull out your blade really quickly so I like to use this only with the blades that I've already dolled out to the point that you know when you're trying to cut through paper and it kind of 
drags the paper everywhere and doesn't make clean cuts and leaves fuzzy bits everywhere, that's the point where you would usually throw out the old blade and get a new one. So I would recommend to, of course, get a new one for cutting on paper, but I would recommend saving that old blade as well. And you can still change it in and out to use in these occasions to cut some thicker material and because it's laminated it actually cuts through just fine even if the blade is dulled and this is how I actually cut all of my cut files last December daily because um, my blade had dulled to the point where I couldn't cut through paper at that time so I just laminated everything and I cut everything with the dulled um, blade that way. Another thing to keep in mind is that depending on your blade it might take two or three passes to cut through all of the laminate. So I recommend after the second or third pass, you might want to just carefully peel off a bit of the corner um, of your piece just to make sure that it's cut completely. And then you can peel it off your mat after that. So here you'll see that I've cut the word Mary from the Paisley Press digital stamp set. And I had enlarged it as well so that it's about five inches wide um, because I'm going to be using this as kind of like a title focal point to my page. And here I'm just going through some of the examples of shapes that I had cut out last year. So um, you'll see some of the white and gold stars that I had cut out. These were all laminated and this was using the December Daily um, 2018 dimensional bundle. And you'll also see um, the simple holiday joys word cut file that I had used from last year's prep party. And that one I had cut out of some 110 pound white cardstock, which results in a thicker piece that is closer to the thickness of actual acrylic. Um, and of course, it feels like a bit more sturdy like acrylic as well. However, that one took like five to six passes I think through my electronic cutting machine to get it completely cut out. So um, for my purposes because I don't want to add too too much bulk to my pages anyways I find the 65 pound cardstock um, whether that's like the gold foiled cardstock or glitter cardstock or just white cardstock works perfectly fine for me but you can definitely play around with um, some cardstocks and laminate that you have at home and see which one works the best for you. I also showed here um, the letter O that I had cut out from um, some laminated vellum and the laminate didn't really stick to the vellum very well. Um, it did stay intact for this O piece, but I had a couple of other letters that um, the laminate just kind of peeled off the vellum. So I wouldn't recommend ve laminating vellum as one of your surfaces. And then um, lastly, I just wanted to show um, this is the same Mary word that's cut out of just some 65 pound white cardstock. So you can see um, how much more delicate and frail this one is compared to the laminated versions that I have here. So this is definitely a fun and inexpensive way to add some more different types of textures to your projects, um, especially if you have an electronic cutting machine. And here's an example of a 10 by 8 page that I created in my album using the Paisley Press mini kit. Um, so the fabric presents are from that kit and the background paper um, was one of the six by eight papers that I had um, printed out at a 10 by eight size. And then I also included the house booklet that we made earlier in this video, as well as some of the um, faux acrylic pieces that I had cut out as well. The third technique that I'm going to be talking about today is to use your digital stamps to make shaker elements for your pages. So this is definitely one that I would encourage you to have an electronic cutting machine for, but if it's something simple like this globe shape um, from the Bring on the Joy stamp set, you might be able to get away with just printing it out and then using a cutter to trim around the edges as well. So the electronic cutting machine that I have is the Brother Scan and Cut. And so I'm using the Brother Canvas software here. Um, I know a lot of you use the Silhouette, so um, mine will likely look slightly different than yours. But I'm just importing the SVG cut file for the snow globe into my program. And then I'm just sizing this up so that um, it's a bit under six inches wide and eight inches tall. And the reason being is because I'm going to be putting this um, in a 6x8 booklet later on. Once I send that off to my cutting machine, I'm going to pick out a photo where the subjects of the photo are kind of um, in the middle of the photo here and are going to fit in like a round shape. 
Um, and so I picked this photo here and I'm just sizing it up to just under six inches wide and six inches tall. And I'm printing that out as well. So here I have all of my elements ready and you'll see that the cut file um, snow globe does fit the picture of me and my family. And I also have the Christmas banner pattern paper. Um, this came in the extra 10 by 8 pattern papers from Ali Edwards. And I'm going to mat the bottom, uh, the stand of the snow globe first because um, once I start adding some foam adhesive to the um, outside perimeter of that circle, it's going to get kind of hard to mat anything else. So since I'm going to be using one of these banners um, from this pattern paper anyways, I decided I might as well use that striped part um, at the edge of the paper to mat my stand. So I'm just using my Zig two-way glue pen um, to apply glue to the very bottom where the stand is. And I'm just going to use my scissors to fussy cut around where um, the cut file ends, just around the edges there. Next, I want to make sure that my paper trimmer is able to trim this um, foam adhesive to about 1 16th of an inch wide. And that's just because the very edge of this snow globe cut file is very, very thin. So I want to make sure that my foam tape is going to be able to be that thin so that it doesn't overhang the edges of that cut file outline a lot. So that did work and I'm going to set this foam tape aside for later. Next, I'm going to adhere some acetate onto the back of this cut file and I'm just using my Zig two-way glue pen again and um, adhering that down and then carefully trimming around the edges of the cut file again with my scissors. And once that's done, I'm going to take that foam tape that I had trimmed down and carefully line the edges of the snow globe with that foam tape making sure that there aren't any gaps between um, where the foam tape ends meet. And I think it's really cool that this foam tape is so malleable once you remove the liners from either side. And it's able to follow any types of curves that you want it to follow. Once I have that done, I'm going to start uh, filling in some of my shaker bits. And to do that, I'm just going to dump all of my shaker contents directly on the photo so that I can then position my snow globe exactly where I want it to be um, on top of the photo with all of the shaker bits included inside of that. So here I have some crystal fine glitter from Martha Stewart. And I think that this um, looks a lot like snow. So I love using this, especially for Christmas projects. And I also have a sequin mix with some small silver stars as well as some white and transparent sequins. I'm not exactly sure where I got this from. Um, it might have been back in my card making days, but I felt like this would make um, a good mixture for a snow globe scene. So I just made sure that I had enough shaker contents that it would kind of cover um, the bottom eighth of my photo. And then I just made sure that there would be um, no sequin pieces um, interfering with the seal around my um, snow globe. And I just stuck that snow globe down and now I'm trimming um, around the edge of the snow globe um, to cut off all the extra bits of photo around that shaker pocket. After that, I'm just cutting out one of the banners from this banner sheet, um, specifically the one that says celebrating this. And I'm adhering that down to the base of my snow globe and that finishes up my interactive element. And to include this shaker pouch into your album, I would recommend that you either put it onto a base page and then put that page into your album, or you can put it um, in like an envelope or a pouch or something like that. Um, definitely don't put pole punches through these because then all the shakery bits will fall out. The next technique that I'm going to talk about is to use your digital stamps and create some backgrounds and use those as cut files to create some stencils. In this example, I'm using the little present stamp, um, the solid one from the Peasley Press stamp set and creating a brick pattern with that. So I'm importing this into my brother Scan and Cut software, which is the canvas. And I'm just going to elongate one of those presents so that it looks more like a long brick. And then I'm going to copy and paste that several times to fill up one of the rows. Then I'm going to group that whole row together and copy and paste that just below 
um, that first line of bricks so that I have two lines of bricks now. Um, and I've just staggered them so that they're um, kind of offset to make it look more like a wall of bricks. And I'm going to continue copying and pasting that um, several times until I've filled up my whole 12 by 12 canvas here. Now, I realized after I finished filling this whole 12 by 12 page up that the some of the bricks on the two sides are overhanging the sides of the 12 by 12 canvas. And the Brother system doesn't have anywhere in the software that you can crop off um, those extra outliers that are overhanging the 12 by 12 canvas. So I had to go in and ungroup each of those rows and manually adjust each of those bricks at either end of those alternating rows so that they fall in between the 12 by 12 canvas that I'm working with. And it didn't take me too long. It was just a bit annoying to do after I had set up everything. So I do recommend um, if you are watching this video and trying this for yourself that you do it right from the beginning by um, including some of the shorter bricks on either end instead of having them overhanging um, like I did at the beginning of this video. I've purchased some stencil material from my local scrapbooking store. This is from Treasured Memories, um, but I'm sure you can find uh, stencil material from other sources as well. I think the Silhouette store has some, um, but although I haven't tried theirs, so I can't really comment on their quality of stencil material. Um, this one that Treasured Memories has is a bit thinner than regular stencil material, but it makes it super easy for the machine to cut through and it's still very durable. I find you can um, definitely have multiple uses out of this one stencil. Um, it's definitely reusable in that way. So here I'm just using some repositionable purple tape to tape down my eight and a half by 11 inch piece of white cardstock to the back of this stencil. And then I'm going to flip it over and start inking this up with some red ink. Um, this is the Distress Oxide ink, and this is in the color Fired Brick. And I thought this would be the perfect color to um, produce kind of like a red brick looking background. So you'll see that as I'm blending using this blender brush here that I'm not really paying too much attention to making sure that all of the bricks are even in color and tone. Um, I do want to make sure that there is color in every brick, but some of them will be a bit more faded than others. And I think that just makes for a really cool looking um, kind of worn out brick look. You'll notice that after a while, I did adhere down the corners of this stencil um, down onto my work surface with some repositionable purple tape. And that's just to prevent the corners of the stencil from shifting too much as I'm applying some pressure and blending this ink down. And the reason why is because if the stencil shifts at all, then you could accidentally get some ink underneath the stencil and the image just won't be as clear as it otherwise would. So you'll see once I lift this stencil up how cool that background looks and it does look a bit more vibrant in real life than on this video here. While I had everything out, um, I decided to clean off my um, stencil just by wiping it down with a baby wipe and then I'm going to create a different background um, using some embossing paste. This is white embossing paste from Studio 490. Um, you can also use white texture paste would also do as well. And I'm going to just swipe this using a palette knife through the stencil. Um, again, I've taped down the edges of the stencil so that the stencil won't lift off the page. And I'm just going to um, kind of do some short swipes as well through the stencil so that it gives kind of a more grungier effect and it's not as smooth as I would otherwise um, make the texture paste out to be. And the cool thing about this white texture paste is that as it dries, it will retain some of the texture that I've created using that swiping motion. So it actually does look like the texture of bricks. And once I lift this um, stencil up, you can kind of see the effect that it gives here, um, although it does look a lot cooler in real life um, as usual. 
And the thing about texture paste is that you want to make sure that you wash it off the stencil and any material that you're working with um, right away after you're using it because if it dries on then it's very hard to scrape off. So um, I made sure to stop the video and wash all of my equipment before I moved on to my next technique. Now the reason why I wanted a brick background for my December daily was because I've been seeing a lot of fireplace ideas floating around on Facebook and Instagram and Crystal Ininate will actually be creating an interactive fireplace spread as part of her Back to Basics lesson. And um, they'll be using these uh, fabric stockings as well. And I am so excited for that. Um, and I will definitely be using um, either the white or the red brick pattern. I haven't decided um, for that foundation page once her lesson comes out. And last but not least, my final technique using digital stamps is to use them as cut files and back them with pattern paper um, for interactive elements on your spread. So here I'm just working in my um, Brother Scan and Cut software again to um, size these ornaments a bit larger so that they are about three inches and four inches in diameter. And I'm going to cut these out just using some plain white cardstock and back these with the pattern papers that came in the main kit, as well as some from the um, extra set of pattern papers as well. Now, last year in my December daily, I had a page where I had three ornaments that I had die cut out of some Starbucks cups, and I made those into flip ups to um, house some journaling and some photos of a Starbucks trip that I took in December. And obviously, I can't do this yet because um, the Christmas cups haven't been released at Starbucks yet. Um, but I think this would be so cool to um, collect a couple of different patterns from Starbucks um, throughout the month and back the cut files using those cups and use those to tell a story of a Starbucks visit or a favorite holiday drink. So these ornaments that I'm just backing with pattern paper probably aren't going to be the ones that I'm going to use for my final December daily album um, because I do want to wait for the Starbucks cups to come out to see if I want to use those instead to back these cut files. Um, but these would look really cute on Christmas cards too, so I think I'll just save them for that. I am backing some of the areas, specifically the um, part where the bobble hangs um, off the, um, like the metal part of the bobble, as well as some of these stars with some gold foil cardstock. And I think that just gives it an extra pop of shine and makes the ornaments look a bit more special. You'll notice as well that after I use my Zig two-way glue pen on the cut file and I place that on the pattern paper or the foiled cardstock, I will take a stamping block and press that over um, the cut file and wait until that dries a bit before I start cutting it out with my um, scissors. And I find that just makes it adhere a bit better, especially because the paper um, and the foiled cardstock tends to curl a bit after it gets wet from the glue. So um, I just find that using the stamping blocks makes it um, so that the pieces can lie a bit flatter um, once I'm done with them. It did take me a while to back the cut files um, just between the glue drying and having to fussy cut all of these small areas. Um, so I did pause the video and here I am back with all three ornaments all backed and um, looking nice and colorful. And here's an example of what the three ornaments would look like on a 10 by 8 layout. Um, and I just put all three of them on the white brick background that I had created earlier. And I think the three ornaments fit really well on this page with the two three inch wide circle sizes and the one four inch wide circle size. Um, so I think I'll do that for my December daily album this year as well um, if I do manage to get a hold of those Starbucks cups. So that finishes up my video for today. I hope you enjoyed all of those techniques using digital stamps, and I hope that inspires you to try some of these um, different ideas for your December daily album. 
I haven't confirmed how many ideas for physical stamps I'll be doing um, for this month, but I'll have at least one video posting the same day that my product play lesson is being released, which is November 23rd. And then depending on how many techniques I come up with and how much time I have in this month, I might put up another video for physical stamps as well. If you liked this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more videos um, for December daily as well. Thanks so much for watching.